culture vulture. Yo, welcome to another episode of Fob Eats. And today, a Fob is eating Panda Express. I've definitely had Panda Express before. school was in regular session i remember i would always go to the panda express for a little comfort chinese food beijing spicy beef is definitely my favorite because you guys know malay like spicy shit at the meantime i would prefer noodle over rice because their rice is not really that on point but um right now i got a little got, got a little cavities going on on my back teeth on the left side so i can only chew on my right side right now so since i'm chewing on my right side right now we're gonna get the rice okay because i'm chewing on my right side so it's like rice side what right now i'm at the bus stop waiting for the bus to get there i'll see you guys at panda express all right so. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Um, so can I get a plate? With, plate, fried rice, or chow mein? Uh, chow mein, please. And what would uh, you like for the meat? With, let's see. Do, do you guys still have uh, Beijing spicy beef? We actually are out of the meat. Oh, uh, out, out of it. Um, I'll just get. So is that all? All there is on the menu? Uh, right okay. Here. Uh, I'll get honey walnut shrimp. And together with um, orange chicken. Okay, anything else? Um, yeah, that's it. Alright, there's something ready for you over there. Alright, thank you. Thank God, blessing me with this. Again. I just put a smack on this orange chicken and shrimp, uh, honey walnut shrimp, uh, together with the chow mein. I mean, I'm not even gonna front, I'm not even gonna say that. Oh, hopefully it's good, cause I know it's good. Okay, it's on point. Who's in on that main street? You relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you see it. The pussy in my neighborhood. So basically the orange chicken, it, it is uh, non-existent in Chinese food. I don't know, where the fuck does the orange chicken come about? I don't know who invented it. As a matter of fact, I will do my research and show you guys how they make their first orange chicken here in America. So when I'm filming the video, I, I know nothing about orange chicken because I never had this shit in China. And I don't know where this shit come about. So I'm editing the video. I'm doing more research on it and I've, I finally found my answer. At least I think so because there are many different explanations that people give to the as to the origin of the orange chicken. The one that I find the most convincing is basically this person, Peng Shangkui from Hunan province in China. This person was born in the 1900s. In the 1940s, there are mainly two political powers in mainland China, the Chinese Nationalist Party and the CCP. So since the CCP at the end of the 1940s, defeated the Chinese Nationalist Party. And this person, Peng Shengkui, was a chef. And he was a chef for the Na uh, Chinese Nationalist Party. They fled to Taiwan due to the defeat by the CCP. And he invented the dish there. At first, the dish was a stir-fried chicken with uh, soy sauce, sweet sauce. And on the side, they put the orange peel to add on to the aroma of the food. As he immigrated to the US in 1970s, he opened up the first Hunanese Chinese restaurants in NYC. He named the dish General Tao's Chicken, which is now very popular among all the menus in all Chinese restaurants across the United States. But it has really nothing to do with General Tao other than just the inventor of the food having a hard time coming up with a good name for the food. General Tao was one of the um, original founders of the Chinese Nationalist Party. So the chef apparently looked up to this person. So he just named that chicken, General Tao's chicken. Now, a lot of people might ask, 
Oh, what the fuck does that have to do with orange chicken? Well, orange chicken simply just tastes like that shit. I tried to search up like where this orange chicken come from. And the only thing that I could find is people said that it is the executive chef in Panda Express, whose name is Andy Cow. He claimed himself to, to be the inventor of the dish. But in my opinion, he probably just, you know, saw the recipe of the General Tso's chicken and then twist it a little bit and then make it into a signature dish in Panda Express. So this dude from Hunan, Peng Sheng Kui, he probably learned this dish from, from the local dishes that don't even got a name yet. And those local dishes are probably sweet and sour and made with chicken. And he probably just learned from there, got inspired by that and then created this dish and then give this dish an official name. As his business grows, this dish become more and more well known. So if we have to trace it back to the origins in China, I would say you walk on the street, any dish that's sweet and sour that involves chicken, it could be from that. So peace out. But for me, as someone from China, I've never heard about this before I come to the States. So in my hometown, we have this dish called the lychee meatball. Once you bite down into that shit, it tastes crispy on the outside and soft in the inside. Together with the sauce on the outside, it's amazing. So I will compare the orange chicken to that. So this is just Panda Express too. This afternoon we add the roasted calamari into their menu. It's gonna make the menu way much more fire than they are right now because the roasted calamari is the shit. Once you put the rice sauce in there, it's chewy, it's nutrition value, it's on the high. It's it's just good, you know what I'm saying? excited for this food right right now i just got off the bus walking back to my dorm my stomach is growling right now because it's my first meal of the day today i got an early dental appointment so i had to get up early and then you know i always sleep in because my sleep schedule fucked up i got an appointment at 11 woke up at 9 30 didn't got enough time to eat breakfast and then the dental practice hella far away so i see you guys in a dorm room all right peace out all right so what's going on right now we got the panda express right here with the panda sign standing out how does your panda points go up Gourmet Chinese food. I got a little vegetables I got from elsewhere. I got a water. If the water temperature shows up in the screen, it's probably like 60 or some shit. Because I microwave the shit, you know how Chinese people roll. We're drinking warm water. We never drink no cold water. Let me introduce you to China's best kept secret. Hot water. Hey. It's a new nutrient superfood that's all the rage in China. Hey. Literally not a food. Hence the word super, it's beyond food. It's China's go-to beverage. You're, you're welcome. Let me open this box up. Yes, sir. Ooh. Oh, damn, yeah. It looks a little ugly, mainly because it's been sitting vertically inside of the bat without me realizing, so I've been carrying it around like that. So the sauce like leaked everywhere. Took me some time to clean them up, but it's gonna be all right because the food is a food. I don't care if it looks nasty or not, as long as it's clean, got a sauce, <laughs> I eat that. So before eating this Panda Express, 
I'm gonna open up this fortune cookie, see what type of message the restaurant is trying to tell me. And it's gonna set the vibe for enjoying this food because you know the fortune cookie, it goes deep in this shit. Like sometimes the message delivered by the fortune cookie just match up so mysteriously with the situation, the real life situation that you're currently in. So I'm gonna just eat this mother. They have fortune cookie in almost every Chinese restaurants in the U.S. But in China, we ain't have none that shit. So apparently, the fortune cookie is invented in the U.S. Culture vulture. Nah, man. Let's see the message. See what I'm talking about? Look at this. Assert yourself. Your ideas are worthwhile. They already know. Like, for those of you who are watching, my ideas for YouTube is gonna blow up one day. It's worthwhile, like as it's indicated from this fortune cookie. But right now, we're gonna set it aside. Another thing to note about the Panda Express, this little receipt right here. You can see on the back, it says, it says within two days of visit, go to their online and fill up a survey. And then the next time you can get a free entree. Well, actually, you don't have to fill up the survey within the two days. You can just keep one of those in your wallet. And then next time you get Panda Express, fill it out right quick because I tried it the last time, like it was like well beyond two days after I had the Panda Express, but I kept it in my wallet. And then the next time I went to the restaurant, I filled out the survey, still was able to get the code and get a free entree. So just keep like one, one receipt from the Panda Express. Don't keep like every receipt you get from the Panda Express because you know, they also trying to get you like filling out re, uh, survey, get the code and feel the need to eat there again, just to be able to exchange your code for free entree. It's not worth it. At the same time, let me uh take a sip of this water. Mmm. <sighs> the warm water. So people be asking me all the time, why do I like drinking warm water? So do you like to take cold shower or warm shower? Yeah, of course the warm shower, right? Who the fuck wants to, likes to take cold showers? So do your organs. So when you're drinking these all these water down, you're flushing all these water down in your stomach, you know, going through your esophagus, they need the warmth from the water that you drink to, to be able to function at a higher level. It's just like people perform better when they feel comfortable, right? The same thing goes for our organs. You have to drink the, the same kind of temperature of water that match up with the temperature inside in order to let them perform perfectly. Let these organs, these little organs perform with their own personality comfortably. If you drink the water with a colder temperature, your body's gonna work harder to warm up that water. The energy that you got, got transferred in to that cold water and why the fuck do you want to waste your energy on some cold water on heating up some cold water at the same time the honey walnut shrimp the orange chicken the chow mein we're gonna see what's up but before we get into it i want to introduce the two condiment packet that comes with the, with the purchase of the food which is the chili sauce with the little chinese characters on the top it means panda appreciate the panda express for uh, you know what i'm saying respecting the culture at the same time we got soy sauce the soy sauce i'm gonna add it into the little chow mein to add in a little flavor and then the chili sauce I'm gonna put the put the sauce on the other side of the box so I, I don't like put it directly into the food and blend them together because I don't want the food to lose its original flavor but let's get into it man real nice real nice oh shit I forgot the soy sauce man soy sauce should go directly into the chow mein man I'm acting like a whole ass dumbass. I just mixed up the soy sauce with the chili sauce. Now that shit, that shit looks disgusting right there. Like I'm not gonna eat that shit. Get the veggies first. No. Veg veggies as usual taste gross. So I'm gonna probably review, fuck this shit. Get a bite of this orange chicken. Mm. The orange chicken is a little bit too sour for me. So. Man, what the fuck is this shit? But anyways. Mmm. 
Chow mein is pretty good. It's really chewy. The slim noodles with elasticity. It's the shit that I like because you just feel like those little strings in your mouth being broken apart by your teeth and with a little bit of salty flavor. And then a little bit of greasiness that kind of lubricates your mouth a little bit. That's real good, I gotta say that. And uh, my favorite entree from the Panda Express, it's probably a Beijing spicy beef. The second one is the honey walnut shrimp. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It just makes it so sweet on the outside. If I eat this honey walnut shrimp right after they cook them at the kitchen, I'm pretty sure the outside layer of it is gonna be way much more crispier than it is right now. But it feels good. I like how it tastes on the inside, you know, the soft touch to the to the meat of the shrimp. Mmm. Mmm. The little the grease. If you're constipated, you'll eat this as a lubricant for your little intestine to work. Mm. What the fuck? It's muy bien. That's muy bien. In my opinion, la, la comida de China Americano is muy bueno. You already know. Got a flex on my Spanish muscle. At the same time, I'm spending out the breath and right now I'm slapping like a motherfucker. I'm ready to fill out the survey and get this shit again. They don't even gotta push the survey no more. They use the survey as their marketing strategy, but in my opinion, this food is their best marketing strategy. It's just, mm, 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 mm. Especially though, you haven't had Panda Express in a long ass time and you're hungry, you get it. Dopamine rush, bro. Dopamine rush is straight up like in your brain. Like right now, if I, you can see through my brain, it's a chemical called dopamine, just straight up releasing. But if I get the same food tomorrow, tomorrow morning, for example, it's not gonna be hitting the same. It's just like your body build up the tolerance for this taste. So you have to have the Americanized Chinese food like every once in a while in order to get the best experience out of every time. At the meantime, the real Chinese food gets you addicted no matter what. Like every day you're craving for that. When you get that, get the same amount of dopamine produced in your brain every time. Like, mmm. Mm, 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 mm. The Panda Express. You gotta respect the cultural exchange. Look, look, look. I like it when you put a certain food from a certain culture into a different one. And then the people from a different culture is gonna do something to that food from another culture and then kind of upgrade it a little bit. Right here, I wouldn't consider it as an upgrade, but it is definitely something different that is worth trying out. I fought with authentic Chinese food, but American Chinese food just it's different sometimes. So when American Burger comes into China, in my city, in the local fast food chain restaurant, they have this burger where they replace the, the normal bread bun with the rice bun. Basically, it is a bun made of sticky rice. And that shit hits, bro. We have to promote cultural exchange for the betterment of our food and a creativity that has been long manifested within the human society. And then I'm gonna keep on enjoying my Panda Express. The chow mein is dope. The honey walnut shrimp, sweet. The little uh, orange chicken, tastes nothing like orange, but it still tastes like, kind of resembles the lychee meatball from my hometown a little bit. Before I sign out, I'm gonna eat this cucumber. I'm gonna eat the whole cucumber because the cucumber tastes kinda kinda bad, you know what I'm saying? But in order to stay healthy, you do whatever the fuck you can. You know what I'm saying? Alright. You will be like, oh Malik, why are you eating all this junk food every time you shoot a video? Why don't you make a video on vegan food restaurant? Look, this right here, every time veggies alongside with the food I have every time. You can say nothing about me. I promote a balanced diet. Fop Eats episode number seven, Panda Express. Dope. Peace out. <laughs>